Hello class. In this lecture, we will learn switching characteristics of a thyristor. When designing a power electronics converter for economical and reliable design of the converter, we normally take into account the static and switching characteristics. The time variations of the voltage across a thyristor and the current through it during turn on and turn off process gives the dynamic or switching or transient characteristics of a thyristor. We will now learn the switching characteristics during turn on. The thyristor turn on time is defined as the time during which a thyristor changes its state from forward blocking state to forward conduction state. The total turn on time is divided into three parts delay time TD, rise time TR and spread time TP. After application of a gate signal, a thyristor changes from the forward blocking state to the forward conduction state. We will be studying the parameters involved in the turn on process and the first parameter is called as delay time. Delay time is the time measured between the point at which the gate current reaches 90% of its final value to the instant at which the anode current reaches 10% of its final value. It can also be defined as the time during which the anode voltage falls from its initial value of VA to 90% of its initial value. It can also be defined as the time during which the anode current rises from forward leakage current to 10% of its final value. This slide shows the gate current distribution across the gate cathode junction and the anode current distribution across the gate cathode junction. During turn on when a voltage is applied across gate and cathode, a gate current flows across the gate cathode junction. As shown in the figure, the gate current density is higher near the gate cathode junction and as we move away from the junction, the current density reduces. Therefore, anode current flows through the region where the gate current density is higher. This shows the flow of anode current The delay time can be decreased by increasing the gate current and by increasing the forward anode to cathode voltage. In this slide, we will learn rise time. Rise time is denoted by TR. Rise time is defined as the time taken by the anode current to rise from 10% of its final value to 90% of its final value. As you can see over here, rise time, during rise time, the anode current rises from 10% of its final value to 90% of its final value. It can also be defined as the time required for the forward blocking voltage to fall from 90% of its initial value to 10% of its initial value. As you can see over here, during rise time, the forward blocking voltage falls from 90% of its initial value to 10% of its initial value. The rise time can be reduced by applying high and steep gate current pulses. During rise time, turn on losses are the highest due to high anode voltage and large anode current occurring in the thyristor. As you can see over here, there are high anode voltages and high anode current Therefore, the losses are high. As these losses occur over a small conducting region, local hotspots may be formed and the device may be damaged.
as seen in the slide during delay time td the anode current is flowing through a very small region as shown over here during rise time the anode current has spread a little as seen over here the anode current is flowing through this region also the anode voltage is very high since the voltage is high and the current is high and the region in which this is occurring is very small local hot spots can be formed and device can get damaged during high rise times next we will see spread time spread time is defined as the time taken by the anode current to rise from 90% of its final value to its final value as you can see over here during spread time tp the anode current rises from 90% of its final value to its final value it can also be defined as the time required for the forward blocking voltage to fall from 10% of its initial value to the on state voltage drop as you can see over here during tp the forward blocking voltage falls from 10% of its initial value to the on state voltage drop across the scr during spread time the conduction spreads over the entire cross section of the gate cathode junction as shown over here after spread time the anode current reaches its final value and the anode voltage or the voltage across the scr reaches the on state voltage drop the total turn on time t on is given by the sum of delay time plus rise time plus spread time as you can see over here total turn on time t on is equal to td delay time plus tr rise time plus spread time tp thyristor turn off means that the transition of a thyristor from the on state to the off state this dynamic process of switching of a thyristor from the on state to the off state is also called as commutation process or turn off process once the thyristor is on gate loses control even if you remove the gate signal the thyristor will continue to conduct this is because of the stored charges in all the four layers once the thyristor is turned on it can be turned off only by bringing the anode current below holding current it is observed that even if the anode current is brought down to zero and if at this point we apply a forward voltage due to the stored charge carriers in all the layers the thyristor will continue to conduct immediately in order to avoid such a possibility a reverse voltage is applied after the anode current is brought down to zero turn off time tq is defined as the time in between the instant at which the anode current becomes zero to the instant at which the scr is capable of blocking a forward voltage during the time tq all the excess charge carriers in the outer junction j1 outer junction j3 must be swept out and the charge carriers at junction j2 
can only be cleared by recombination. Turn off time is divided into two parts reverse recovery time TRR and gate recovery time TGR. It is observed that during turn off, when the anode current is brought down to zero, the anode current will continue to flow in the opposite direction with the same slope of di by dt. This is because of the trapped charges in the junctions J1, J2 and J3. Reverse recovery current removes the excess charge carriers across junctions J1 and J3 during the time interval T1 to T3. Reverse recovery current flows due to removal of excess holes in the outer P layer and excess free electrons in the outer N layer in the time interval T1 to T3. At instant T2, when about 60% of the charge carriers are swept out, the charge carrier density at J1 and J3 is reduced and therefore the current starts to reduce gradually. The reverse current is steep at the start and then it begins to reduce gradually. Because the nature of the current is steep at this section at instant T2, a reverse voltage appears across the thyristor due to the circuit inductance. This reverse voltage may damage the thyristor. Damage due to reverse voltage can be avoided by using protective RC circuits. At instant T3, when the anode current has nearly fallen to zero, all the excess charge carriers across junctions J1 and J3 are swept out and the SCR is capable of blocking a reverse voltage at instant T3. At instant T3, there are still trapped charges at junction J2 and the thyristor is not capable of blocking a forward voltage. The trapped charges at junction J2 can decay only by recombination. This can happen only when a reverse voltage is applied across the thyristor for a certain amount of time. The time for recombination of charges across the J2 junction is called as gate recovery time and it falls between the instants T3 and T4. At instant T4, all the trapped charges at junction J2 have decayed and the SCR is capable of blocking a forward voltage. The commutation time TC must be greater than the turn off time TQ in order to enable perfect turn off of the thyristor. Otherwise, device may turn off at at Otherwise, device may turn on at an undesirable instant. This process is called as commutation failure. Thyristor turn off time TQ is the sum of reverse recovery time TRR and gate recovery time TGR. The term TC stands for commutation time and the commutation time must be greater than turn off time in order to ensure reliable turn off of the thyristor.